If there's one thing that gets an ADC player really nervous during champion select, it's seeing your opponents lock in a brutal kill lane. It's super frustrating to play against. If you make a single mistake, then you get annihilated instantly. What's worse is having no control over your support. You just know that they're going to get caught over and over again. So for this week, we'll be covering a game where DRX's Deft went against a Draven Pantheon lane as a squishy Twitch and came out ahead in spite of some agonizing circumstances. Deft also went for a very interesting adaptation to his build this game. Instead of Doran's Blade or Shield, he started Cloth Armor and Refillable Potion. This is a super intelligent adaptation versus certain kill lanes, specifically when the enemy support is an AD champion. With the prevalence of Pike, Pantheon, Set, and even sometimes Poppy in the support role, this is a great tech to keep in mind for when you might need it. It's also best when combined with a healing or shielding support because of how armor influences effective health. For example, let's say you have 400 HP and you have enough armor to where you take 25% less damage from physical attacks. Technically, you have 500 health versus physical attacks. Duh. The point is, if you have a shielding or healing support, then starting cloth armor makes all their shields and heals more effective than if you had just gone Doran's Blade. Deft had a recon this game, so both conditions were met for this neat little starting tech. With that in mind, let's get into our missions. When surviving kill lanes, your first goal is simply to let the wave push. They can obviously kill you, so don't try and contest this if you can't early on. Mission number two is letting that push crash and getting a bounce back slow push. Kill lanes are very weak versus slow pushes. It's hard to engage when you have a big wave defending you. If they do attempt to all in you in a big wave, unless they kill you instantly, you'll generally come out on top with all the extra minion damage that they'll take. Mission number three is to either base off of your crash or rinse and repeat the process. Once you crash, they'll get a slow push back. You wait for it to crash, then you do it again to them, etc. Your goal is to always have the lane in a state of a slow push, one way or the other. That way the wave is either pushing towards you when you can back off and wait for it, or you have a big enough wave to where the enemy can't fight you. There is one clear weakness to this strategy though. If the enemy team crashes the wave and calls their jungler, you could lose a ton of farm and turret plates dying at such a critical time. This is why it's so important to try and stay at full health and coordinate double defensive summoner spells with your support. It's much more difficult to dive to full HP players, so just be mindful of that being a possibility. Alright, let's get into the game. As Dept and Rakan hop into lane, we see that they're immediately cheesed by the Pantheon and Draven. Instead of turning and running, Deft just fights back confidently. One, they're focusing his recon, but more importantly, the enemy is fighting in Deft's wave. Even though that went really favorably from the bad engage on the enemy side, the matchup is still heavily favored for them early on. Like we said, Deft has no choice but to concede all control as per mission one. He does end up tanking a couple of ranged Qs from Pantheon, but otherwise space is very far away to not take any unnecessary harass. Now he just last hits the wave under tower and mission 2 can get underway. That is, until we see Jarvin coming in for a gank. Based on what you know so far, what should be on the forefront of your mind if you were in this situation? Thinking about the enemy jungler is the correct answer here. Remember, Deft and Rakan got cheesed early on. Elise is definitely on the bot side of the map, which means this gank needs to happen smoothly and quickly before she's able to react. Unfortunately, Draven and Pantheon do a really good job of stalling this out. There's nothing Deft could have really done about this, but he made sure to never overcommit to the play. He was always at a safe enough distance to where he could flash out should he need to. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Deft is forced to base, missing the huge wave, crashing into his tower, and falling behind in an already rough matchup. On basing, he buys Vampiric Scepter. This is actually going to go great with his cloth armor. Remember what we discussed earlier. All healing that Deft receives with this cloth armor is just that bit more effective. Life still works the exact same way. When doing this setup, we highly recommend going for a Vamp Scepter first item if your champion is capable of doing so. If they're not, then Double Dorn's Blade is also really good. Your goal is to live versus kill lanes, so even if you stunt your build initially, it won't matter that much since you can just play to scale. 
Once he gets back to lane, we see mission 2 happening naturally, since the enemy crashed the wave prior to deft basing. It doesn't really matter how you get into this state most of the time, as long as you use it to try and set up a crash of your own. Def just pushes this as slowly as he can until he's got a nice and big wave stacked up. Then once the waves are starting to crash around the middle or closer to your opponent's side like this, that's when you can hard push the next wave so that you can potentially get a crash. But after he finishes killing off the wave, Draven and Pantheon are kind of holding it and playing very aggressively despite being at a huge wave deficit. This very obviously means that Elise is here, so you can see Deft playing fairly far back. His Rakan unfortunately doesn't take the hint, and just dies to a fairly obvious brush gank. This is possibly the most frustrating part of playing as an ADC versus a kill lane. You can play safe and feel like you're making all the right choices, but everything keeps going wrong. Normally this is a terrible situation to be in, but let's see how Deft brings it back. So now we have a bit of a different question for you guys. Based on the lane state, what should Pantheon be looking to do at the moment? The answer is roaming. Understanding other roles can usually help you to make better decisions in your own role. The higher elos that you climb to, the better engaged supports get at finding roam timings. Right now, Rakan just died, the wave is pushing toward Draven, and Twitch has likely been forced to recall. There's nothing threatening his Draven at the moment, it's a perfect time to recall and look to roam to another lane. Deft is quite aware of this. He knows Pantheon and Elise likely left Draven alone to farm, since Deft technically should just leave lane at this point. He fakes his recall and loops around, seeing if he can spot anything fishy and check to make sure the coast is clear. Once safe, Deft can fix the frozen wave and push it into the tower. Pings then come down for Jarvan to walk down here and set up a dive. Luckily, this is Korean solo queue. Both Jarvan and Rakan also become aware that Pantheon isn't here, and they all set up a nice dive on the Draven. There's an immediate, obvious concern here. We don't all play in Challenger Korean solo queue. There's no world in which our own teammates recognize that Pantheon is roaming at the moment. As always, the lesson here is mostly recognizing what Pantheon was doing. Whether or not Def's teammates punished him for it isn't really the main concern. Likewise, you get punished much less in kill lanes in low elo. Our missions are generally very good for keeping you safe from the threat of dying in scary lanes. Punishing those missions requires dive setups, which we discussed earlier, or junglers coming in to make sure that you can't crash your wave like we saw Elise do. Low elo junglers are in no way aware of the state of the minion waves to do that consistently. With that in mind, Deft is happy for once with what has transpired, gets some turret plates, and sets up his own recall. Once Deft gets back to lane, we actually see him make a small mistake. He fast pushes this wave, which ends up freezing for the enemy team. We think he did this because engaged supports generally roam and path toward mid after recalling in high elo. Maybe he didn't want to be committing to a slow push while he's all alone, so we thought he could crash the wave and get a bounce back. This way it sets up the wave to be pushing back to him while Rakan is away, but he likely just overestimated his own clear speed and allowed the Draven to set up a freeze. Regardless, Deft continues playing aggressively by himself. Now, this is definitely something you should never do on your own. This is showing respect to his opponents. There's no world in which he just sits here wave clearing like this versus Draven and Pantheon unless the Rakan is here. You can see that they have no vision of where Rakan is. Deft knows this and uses that to his advantage to play up even by himself. Again, don't try this. It requires your opponents to actually be thinking about the game, which generally doesn't happen in lower elos. Once the wave is dead and Rakan is near, he starts playing quite a bit aggressively, baiting them to come into him so Rakan can counter. They take the bait and double flash on him, so he trades his own to get out. Obviously a bit of limit testing there, but with Rakan's E, there's no world where he dies to this, and if he doesn't die, he can just lifesteal back up with his Vampiric Scepter. With most of his health back, he forces a trade versus the depleted bot lane and easily wins the 2v2. It's safe to say that this laning phase was successfully survived. Deft comes back with a completed Blade of the Ruin King, and at this point, they just spam shove the enemy duo. Unable to score kills, they get outscaled, and Deft easily goes on to win the game. And it was as simple as that. With a creative build, quite a bit of patience, and basic fundamentals, Deft never really felt like he was under threat of dying. 
It's all about keeping your cool and waiting for opportunities to arise where you can punish, like when Pantheon left Draven alone. And as a final side note, you may be wondering what to do with the cloth armor in your inventory. Well, you can just sell it after a certain point, or if Ninja Tabis are a good option that game, then you can turn it into those. By the way, you should know where these videos come from. Our Hyper Improvement Platform Skill Cap is by far the best place to be if you want to actually improve at League of Legends. You can input your rank before you sign up and see where we think you'll climb to. If you don't reach that rank while actively using Skill Capped, you can claim a full refund. That's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped or you get your money back. We offer this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't, you shouldn't have to pay for it. So be sure to check us out after this. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this guy. We'll see you all next week.